Welcome, friends, to Merely Monday at Your Other Brothers, a community navigating faith, homosexuality, and masculinity together. My name is Tom, and I'm the co-founder editor of Your Other Brothers, and this is Manly Monday, our series that is either bi-monthly or semi-monthly. You decide. This is an exciting episode because it is the finale, not of Manly Monday, but it's the finale of our five-part series about our five values. If you go to yourotherbrothers.com slash about, you can read our five values. We've been doing videos on each of them, and today we conclude this series by talking about vulnerability represented by a quill, a powerful, powerful symbol, my favorite actually of all five. Um, we're wrapping it all up today. This is the end of an era, the end of a series. This is where the Death Star gets blown up again, how it all ends. I'm really excited to talk about vulnerability. It is my favorite of our five values. I'm excited to tell you why and share some vulnerable stories from my life. So my journey with vulnerability, it is a long and winding one going back literally a decade. 10 years ago is when I first started blogging anonymously about issues of sexuality and faith and masculinity and feeling different as a kid, as a boy growing up. And for years, this was my notion of vulnerability. My, mo my notion of vulnerability was I can only really be vulnerable and write vulnerably specifically as a writer uh, amongst people that are the same as me. Like I had a safe audience amongst other anonymous believers who also were writing <laughs> anonymously about faith and sexuality. So lo and behold, as years go by, all of a sudden I stumble across a blog about a believer, a Christ follower, writing about his struggle with pornography and putting his name to it in this article, in this blog post. And straight pornography was the struggle. It wasn't gay pornography. And the first time I read that post, it was the first time I've ever read anything like that from somebody within Christianity, within the church. Um, someone willing to put his name to a sexual struggle. Like I had never seen that before. And I was like, wait a minute, straight people can be vulnerable too? That's a thing? And I like devoured his writing, devoured, because I read that post, I read a bunch of other, I found his blog and read a bunch of his blogs and he wrote a couple books and I wrote a read a couple of his books and my light switches got turned on in a whole new way compared to blogging anonymously for these last, whatever it was, four years maybe to that point, three or four years. And I realized that vulnerability can happen outside of my little niche, my little area, my little subculture of Christianity and same-sex attraction. And it was beautiful because I was inspired like I never before had been. And finding this author, finding this writer's blogs and writings kind of kickstarted a vision that I'd experienced four years prior when I was at a conference. And I really, I don't like to... I don't like to describe it as hearing the voice of God in some like mystical, um, overly bizarre sort of a way. But on the last night of that conference that I went to, which was a conference geared toward people of faith with same-sex attraction. I don't know, it was a gut feeling, it was an intuition, it was definitely a resounding thought, <laughs> if nothing else, that I needed to tell my story on a larger scale. I needed to be vulnerable, not just for the people in my camp, in my sphere, and the people who are already familiar with the struggle because they experienced it themselves, but to people outside of that as well. And for like three or four years, that idea just kind of tabled in my heart, in my soul, because I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, I'm not ready to tell the world that I struggle with sexuality and that I have these, these feelings that I've had since I was a kid and I don't know how to reconcile them with my faith and find like a healthy, intimate community, especially a community of men who will support me and walk with me through it. I had no idea how to handle this calling or this voice of God, whatever it was. And when I read this guy's posts and his vulnerability, it inspired something in me that hadn't really been awoken since I started blogging anonymously. And over the next year to year and a half, that would continue to be tabled and processed and analyzed within my heart, within my mind. And eventually I did reach a point where I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. This isn't for everybody, but it's for me. I feel like it's distinctly for me as a writer, as an author, and even as a human that I need to tell my story and I need to be vulnerable about these nitty gritty, messy, uncomfortable, yet necessary topics. And ultimately I wrote a book, my first book in 2013 and put it out there and for the first time told the world, told anyone who would open it and open the pages and read that I've been attracted to the same sex ever since I was a kid, as long as I can remember really. 
and I'm also a Christ follower and I follow Jesus and I followed him as long as I can remember. And these two things have basically coexisted for my entire life. And vulnerability is a powerful thing. Um, ever since I have come out to the world, I've heard from dozens and dozens of people, people who are finding your other brother still, even all these years later for the first time, and people that are inspired by vulnerability, not just mine, but all of the guys on our site who are blogging, who are coming on podcasts, who are commenting on the site even, and our supporters that we have. There's so much vulnerability to be found in this community. And it, when we were debating, when we were talking about all these different values, and we threw out like 10 or 15 possibilities of, of values that we would hold dear, I mean, the first one that came to mind for me was vulnerability. Vulnerability is at the top of the list because if, without vulnerability, what are we? If we're just sugarcoating and fluffing up our stories to make them sound good or appear good without any regard for the messy, hard, sometimes hard to talk about parts, then what are we here for? What is the point of this community if we're not here to support each other through those dark times and through those hard and confusing times? So vulnerability, it holds a special place in my heart obviously as a writer and as an author, but as a human, I mean, vulnerability is for everybody. It's not for people who write books. It's not for speakers. It's not for YouTube celebrities. It's for everybody. And vulnerability on our site manifests itself in many ways. And I hope that people who come across our site or come across these videos, our YouTube channel, can get inspired by vulnerability. The researcher and author, Brene Brown, she's written several books. She has a TED Talk on vulnerability. And she mentions this concept that we feel our vulnerability is weakness. And yet when we see vulnerability displayed by others, whether they're writing blog posts or books or filming YouTube videos or speaking at churches or conferences or what have you, when we see vulnerability and weakness in them, we actually don't interpret it as weakness. We see it as strength and we see it as courage, which is another one of our values. We see it as all these redeeming positive things, but when we look at it within ourselves and all of our dark, messy secrets and shame that we have, we only see that as weakness. And it's so interesting that as people of faith, as Christ followers, we can point to scripture and we can say that our weakness not only is strength, not only can be used for strength for the rest of humanity to watch and see and witness, but that it's not even our strength. It's not even a strength that we claim for ourselves, that it's a strength that we can claim for God, of God working through us and in us. Which brings us to our theme verse for vulnerability. And it's 2 Corinthians 12.9. And it reads, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I love that verse. It's one of my favorites in all of scripture because it means our weakness doesn't have to stay weakness. Our shame and our secrets and our messed upness doesn't have to stay that way. It can be redeemed. Like that drop right now of my pen, that awful sound that just happened, that, even that, can be redeemed. And I love that aspect of our site is that, yeah, it's dark, it can be messy, and it can be confusing and, and really difficult to navigate at times, these journeys, these stories that are all coexisting in one place. But I believe in the midst of all of that, there is a hope, starting from the beginning, that we're chasing a hope. And then if we humble ourselves, if we unite in brotherhood, if we take courage, if we be vulnerable, that beautiful things can happen, redemptive things can happen. And I've seen redemption occur in my life through the telling of story and connecting with all my other brothers on our site, from the other authors to our commenters and supporters. It's been a beautiful thing to witness. And if you're new to your other brothers, please pull up a chair, read our stories, comment as you feel led, as you feel comfortable or able. Um, and we'd love for you to join this fold, this brotherhood as well. The discussion question for this episode, all about vulnerability, and it's all about how do you practice vulnerability? And practicing vulnerability can look like lots of things. It can look like journaling. It can look like accountability. It can look like mentorship, talking to a mentor, or confessing to somebody, um, with friends, with people at church, with family. I mean, vulnerability has all these different flavors and all these different outlets and avenues, and writing and speaking being one of them as well. So I'm curious how you, in your life, you watching this right now, how do you practice vulnerability? And furthermore, how have you seen vulnerability be used for strength? How have you seen your weakness be used for strength? How has God taken those deep, dark parts of you and turned something redemptive into it? And maybe you're still waiting and maybe you're still searching for that moment or that transformation or that moment to happen. And that's fine too. I would just love to hear the vulnerability stories that y'all have. Um, share them on our comments, either below on our YouTube channel or go to our website, yourotherbrothers.com video 
and find the Manly Monday episode on vulnerability. And please leave a comment. I'd love to hear the vulnerability stories out there because I know there are so many. And there's so much freedom and relief that can come from confessing something, from putting something out there for someone who you trust, for someone that you love to be there and receive you and accept you. And there's nothing quite like it. Alrighty, y'all, it is time for the State of the Yob, our bi-weekly slash semi-monthly. I don't know how to say it anymore. It's twice every month we do this. <laughs> we go around the site and look at everything that's happening on yourotherbrothers.com, starting with our blog. First, we have a post called When Grief Tests a Friendship by Marshall. Marshall's in the middle of a friendship series um, with a straight alpha male friend that he has. And this one takes a bit of a, a hard turn as he talks about a death in his community and just like the fallout from grief and how grief tests a community and particularly tests a friendship between Marshall, you know, Mr. Sensitive, Emotional, <laughs> Caring Marshall, and then his straight alpha male, hard-nosed, focused um, friend. So it's a great post worth checking out. You can check that one out. And then Ryan wrote a post called Come Out to My Family, like a hit and run. And this post hits home very hard for me because I feel, and I feel like a lot of people actually, because he talks about coming out to his family in like an abrupt kind of like mic drop, mic drop moment. Ouch, this is so awful. Um, he, yeah, told his family and then got in his car and left and ran, ran from that situation. And I resonate with that because I did a similar thing when I was 19 years old and I wrote a journal entry where I first wrote out my struggle with sexuality and I put it pen, put words to pen to page and handed my journal to my parents, to my father in particular, and then told them I was leaving town. I was still living at home at the time and then I told them I was leaving town for the weekend. So I left for two days. Um, and that was like my own version of a hit and run as well. So. Um, and I have a feeling I've already heard other people do similar things, like leaving letters for their family or loved ones and then leaving and then coming back to it later. So I have a feeling this one really connects with a lot of people. Um, it's all about coming out and bringing those people that are closest to you into that inner circle in your life. So a lot of resonation there. And then this happens from time to time. Every once in a while, I blog. It's a rarity, I know. But I wrote a post called We Need to Get Over Same-Sex Attraction Already. And I hope that title doesn't scare you if you haven't read it already. <laughs> but um, it's me talking about, yeah, same-sex attraction and sexuality. That is clearly a huge, important thing, especially within Christian culture and church culture. Like, it's something that's not talked about enough. And these are huge, pivotal things affecting lives everywhere. Um, at the same time, there's more to life than sexuality. There's more to life than sex and romance. And I had a conversation with a friend, actually, recently, some time ago, that inspired this post and kind of helped me flesh it out a little bit because it's been percolating for a while. It's been inside my heart and I've been wanting to like breach this topic for a while. But here it is finally after all these many months of it being in there. Um, and yeah, it's just about zooming out a little bit. Like it's kind of ironic in the sense that we're, I'm writing this blog on a website dedicated to issues of primarily sexuality. But the whole aspect of it is that there's more to life than our sexuality and then sex and then this and this and this all connected to, to homosexuality. And it's good to like step away from that and recognize not only other struggles, but other areas of growth as well, opportunities for growth. So check that out if that doesn't intimidate you or confuse you too much. You can read all of our posts, those and more by going to yourotherbrothers.com slash blog. Over in podcast land are bi-monthly slash semi-monthly podcast. We did an episode on marriage, yet another one, and the trilogy is complete. Originally, we intended to do one, exactly one episode on marriage, where we interviewed our friend Corey, who blogs on the site, and we interviewed him and his wife. But then we realized that kind of just tilts it toward one direction. So then we interviewed another person, John, and realized that, oh my gosh, John got divorced and marriage is a big deal and marriage requires a lot of work and it may not be for everybody. And so we covered that side of the spectrum. And so then that left this like gaping hole in between these like super successful and super destructive stories. And so we decided, you know what, let's just wrap this up. Let's make a trilogy of it. Our first trilogy that we've ever done on the podcast. And we did an episode called Marriage, The Middle Ground, our 34th episode. And it was just me and Elliot talking no guests talking to each other about our views on marriage and how we reacted to these two podcasts. And then also sharing some of our supporters stories as well. Some married, some single. And it was a great episode. We, we covered a lot of ground. 
I joked that we would, we would cover all the million infinite stories in between. The truth is there's still plenty of other stories of married life, mixed orientation marriage and singleness and thoughts and hopes for marriage. There's so many more stories out there. But I think with these three episodes, we've really hit three distinct arenas, three distinct flavors of marriage. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we've, we've covered as much as we can cover for now. And we may return to marriage in the future. But for now, marriage, that's all we've been talking about. We're like the, the hippest... Christian marriage podcast in the land right now. So check out episode 34 of the Yobcast. You can subscribe on iTunes, and if you enjoy the show, please rate and review us as well. Now it's time for the mailbag, and we're talking about the mail that we receive here at Your Other Brothers. You can email this show anytime, mailingmonday at yourotherbrothers.com. Um, we're hitting a bit of a dry spell with the email, which is fine. You know, sometimes you open the mailbox and you see mail, and sometimes, sometimes you don't. I did want to bring up a comment from our last episode on Courage, our last Manly Monday on Courage, on our blog, someone left a comment with a quote that I found fantastic. I can't believe I didn't bring up the quote myself. And the quote was, courage is not the absence of our fears, but the facing of our fears. I don't know. I just really liked that quote, that like, just because you find the courage to go on a roller coaster or speak in front of a church, in front of a crowd, doesn't mean you're not afraid anymore. The fear, I think, coexists with the courage. And courage for me has just been handing, handing the keys, or I'm trying to think of a good analogy, or like switching your pedal, like you put your foot on one pedal and you change it to the other pedal. One of those will work. I see some sort of a vehicular metaphor here. The whole point of it is though, yeah, when you're taking courage, it doesn't mean you're losing fear. It just means you're giving control to the courage, not the fear. I appreciated that quote. You can also, in addition to email, Send us snail mail. You're the brothers, P.O. Box 843, Asheville, North Carolina, 28802. Once again, a bit of a dry spell in the snail mail arena. But um, once again, still enjoying your other brother's tea. I've got tea that'll last me till kingdom come, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> drinking some pomegranate tea today. I forget what I was drinking last time. But the pomegranate one is definitely in the upper echelon of, of favorites. I've enjoyed this tea. Highly recommended. So that's going to do it for... This episode of Manly Monday, if you believe in what we're doing here at Your Other Brothers, the stories we're telling, the community we're creating, and you want to support us financially, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash yourotherbros. All the information is there. We'd love to have you climb aboard, join the brotherhood. And be sure to thumbs up the video if you like it. You can comment below or again on our video episode page at yourotherbrothers.com slash video. And once again, talk to me. Tell me about vulnerability in your life, how you practice it, how you've seen it, turn from weakness to growth and strength in your life. I'd love to hear those stories. Those stories are my favorite kinds of stories. So please share them somewhere. Type them up. Send me an email. Write me a postcard. Um, write me a 10-page letter. Any of those will do. I'd accept all of those. And that's going to do it for our Five Values series. The Death Star has blown up. We have done it. We have celebrated. And it's, my, it's anyone's guess, mine included, what the next episode is going to be about. I have no idea. So that'll do it. Until next Manly Monday, this is Tom reminding you to speak meekly, chase madly, and be manly everywhere in between.